Hello again. This week, we're talking about fascia release. So fascia release, myofascia release, it's all over the internet and there's people showing demonstrations of lots of different ways of rubbing people or pressing somebody and claiming that somehow it's releasing their fascia. And here's the thing, it's not. Uh, you can't release fascia, you know, where's it gonna go? It's not a box of doves. What's the difference between myofascial release and massage? Um, nothing. There may be technical differences in terms of the technique you get shown, but there's no differences in terms of what it's going to do to fascia. Fascia isn't really a single thing. And if I showed you three structures, you know, water and some slushy um, ice type stuff and then hard ice, then they've got different names. But it's not a huge step for us to understand that they're all the same thing, which is essentially water, that the conditions um, around each of them is creating a different texture to the water. You can say the same thing of, of fascia, that as I said, it's not one particular thing, it changes its nature um, and its lay down in different parts of the body depending on what's needed and where it is and you know it can be really thin it can be really thick. The idea that you can identify with your hands fascia um, as opposed to muscle and then treat it differently or touch it differently is, is just bonkers really. Remember that fascia is connective tissue all all fascia is connective tissue but not all connective tissue is fascia it's the thing I keep saying over and over again. The thing that therapists do to the exclusion of everything else remember is that you know we work on a huge organ and it's called the skin and this is also you guessed it connective tissue now the skin is is held in place it's held down by fibers that uh, run from it through the fat layer and then these fibers are going to become uh, fibers that are going to blend into deeper layers of fascia or, or muscle or wrap themselves around bone but they're the same nature and they're continuous continuous and they're made up of the same thing predominantly which is collagen and as I said, they, they, they don't stop when they get to another layer of structure and become a separate layer and then go off and become something different. Just because the layer is different, the fibers are still the same nature and they're continuous. The fascia that gets depicted is this wispy spider's web tissue um, in appearance. And I've got a picture here to show you. And it's also a bit misleading. You know, what you're looking at in the picture there is the fascial fibers between the muscle fibers being, being dead um, and very dry, but also most important, being pulled apart. It's literally being destroyed as we look at it. The fibers that you can see are at the end, um, or actually beyond really, the, the end of their tensional range. Now, if this was happening in a live body, it would be screamingly painful. So when we talk about releasing fascia, I, I'm never really sure the pictures that somebody has in their head or, or what they mean. When we put our hands on somebody and we move things around and apply pressure, we, we know Know for sure that we're going to increase blood supply and fluid into that area and that we're also going to potentially change the way that information is being processed you know between the spine and the brain and the brain back down into the body in the long term this may change the way that the collagen fibers are laid down and how the pain is processed. But in the short term, in the session space, nothing about the fascia is gonna change while anybody is rubbing them. Now the big sheet-like structures um, the, are, are referred to as the aponeurosis, um, the tissues around the leg, you know, these big sheet-like uh, tissues that we see. And, and these aren't tissues that are gonna be affected by any kind of manual input. You know, they're too massively strong. Collagen fibers, when, when they're fully formed, they're a triple helix and they have, you know, pound for pound, they're stronger than steel rope. And there's a really good reason for this, which is that they're holding us in place. You know, they're stopping us from falling over. Um, they are providing the tension that our body requires um, in order to, for, to be able to move around and to do the things that we do on a, a moment by moment basis. The last thing that we want is for them to be so susceptible to somebody giving us a rub that they then you know, suddenly collapse and change. Yeah, you know, the kind of pressure that you would have to apply to change these strong, particularly the sheet-like fascias, you know, you just rip the skin apart and long before you, you got any change in the fascia. And, and look, don't even uh, get me started on mechanotransduction and, and, and promoting uh, collagen laydown. It's just not happening. What exactly are we doing when we give somebody a treatment, whether it be, you know, whether it be mass or myofascial release or anything else? This is a really good question. This is something I've spent my entire life, my adult life and career trying to 
work out and explain and kind of debate it. To be honest, we don't really know and there isn't really any consensus. The whole principle of, of touch is one of the most profound aspects of humanity and it has huge nuances to it for, for us as, as individuals. The bottom line is that, you know, when you rub somebody and they feel better, that's it. That's the most important thing. It doesn't really matter what you do. There will be, as I mentioned, uh, um, changes in blood supply. There'll be a fluid coming into the area and a change in the way that the uh, body is responding to information coming and going. Um, and uh, the receptors will kick off and so on and so forth. Other than that, if anybody's telling you anything else, well, they're telling your story. The fibers that hold us in place can't be just, you know, melted away or released, but they can be moved um, and movement is the key. And sometimes I think that's what tends to get missed. Now, there's no doubt that as therapists, whether it's movement therapy or manual therapy, we can definitely help people and our clients to decrease their pain um, and have better relationships with the movement and how that happens is, is, isn't the issue. Um, but if we can help them to increase their ranges and decrease their pain, then this is what really counts. As to the thing that we do, probably less important, whatever the certificate happens to be on our wall. There's no question that touch is one of the most powerful and useful things that we have as, as ways of connecting to other humans. We know that touch reduces pain scales, decreases infection rates, and it increases healing responses dramatically. All these studies have shown this. And it's generally something that we can understand is, is hugely powerful from human to human. To my mind, the relegation of touch out of any healthcare system is a demonstration really that the healthcare system is, is fundamentally broken um, and something that deeply misunderstands understands the role of, of what humans really need in order to feel better. But in terms of fascia release, well, I, I guess it's natural that we try and bring justification and stories and explanations and so forth to what it is that we are doing or what we think we're doing. And, you know, fascia is a poorly described tissue in all the books. Any bit of mystery is attractive, right? So stories are, are fine as long as we maintain the understanding that these are just stories or allegories or, or examples. When we get into this obsession around fascia, it's almost reaching sort of cult-like status uh, proportions in some quarters. It's quite concerning. And the things that are coming up around it as sort of extensions of this obsession are nothing short of a little troubling and, and, and pretty weird and unhelpful. I've seen a video of, of a room full of people chanting bone is fascia uh, because uh, they were told to do so, but I'm not sure they all fully understood the the argument or, or what might be for or against the claim from a you know biological perspective. Bone isn't fascia and it's it's just daft to suggest it is, but that's another story. Just repeating a lie or a chant doesn't make it true or valid. Build a wall, lock her up and all that kind of stuff. Being told what to say is, is worrying. When we work on somebody, it's understandable that we, we want to apply the knowledge that we've been given through our training and our study and we'll use that in order to explain and understand what we're doing. Um, and um, that's fine, but it doesn't make it factual. There are whole swathes of therapy out there that are based around statements supposedly a fact that have no basis in, in physiology or what is even you know possible. I have no problem with an, uh, an idea, a hypothesis or a proposed explanation of something or even a story that helps people to understand what it, what's going on, but they're not facts and, and fascia release isn't a thing. So maybe a t-shirt, you can't release fascia, it's not a box of doves. I guess it's a bit controversial. I, I'm not trying to upset anybody. Tell me what I'm missing. Leave some comments in the uh, comment section below. Uh, please share, like, and subscribe. Do all the things we're supposed to do on social media and I'll be uh, back next time with a different shirt.